<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. But, you know, we couldn't figure out how to put the different fighting sports together, mm-hmm. right? So wh- whose rules do you use? Right. I mean, and so really the basis of the UFC was always, you know, no rules became, you know, this huge thing. But it was also whose rules do you use? Mm-hmm. I mean, how are you going to get a boxer against the jujitsu guy? Right. What, what are you going to use? You can't. There's no rules you can use. Did anybody try to gouge eyes? Was that, was that legal in the early one? Well, you know, you know what? I mean, I always would hear about these Wing Chun masters. They'd had 50 ways to pop your eye out with their thumb. And I kept calling them going, bring your thumbs and do it, man. Don't talk <laughs> about it. Come and pop everybody's eye out. What I want would you it. have done if a guy lost an eye, though? What would you have done? It would, we'd pick it up. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> what, what would we do? Uh, you know, come on. There's also there's a, there's a reality to fighting that you know better than most people on the planet, right? If you're defending yourself... You're defending yourself, whether it's from a right hook, you know, right cross, uh, uh, an elbow, a knee, or having your eye guide gouged out. You're blocking. You're you're aware. You know, if a guy comes at you with his thumbs up to do the gouge, you're you're in a defensive position. Well, it is interesting though how many people are getting poked in the eyes now when it's illegal, and how often it happens, and what you know the reality of how devastating the results are. When guys get their cornea scratched and they get a fingernail in the eye, they get a finger jab in the eye, even if it's accidental, man, they scream and run away. And Eyes are sensitive. Is it any different in other sports? The same in football if someone gets their hand inside the helmet. It's same in you know, mm-hmm. boxing. You know, in mm-hmm. the old days, guys used to do stuff to the gloves. So Roberto Duran versus Davey yeah. Moore. He thumbed him in the eye. Yeah. and the, Well, he was kicking his ass anyway, but Davey Moore couldn't see out of his eye, and then Roberto beat the fucking shit out of him. So... You know, the UFC didn't invent this. No, thumbing is a long-time strategy in boxing, and they actually develop gloves that have the thumb pinned down because of that. Because in the old days, the thumb would detach from from the uh, the glove. And even when it's, like, stitched in a little bit, you can still kind of get it in there. You can get it in there if you're just trying to poke a guy in the eye, which many people did do. That's a definitely a dirty trick. Well, it is a fight. Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, Shamrock was who? Who did he fight? This was like UFC three or four. He said it was maybe one of the preliminaries. Someone reached into his speedos and <laughs> moved his cup out of the way so he could knee him. And Ken was going, "Dude, we're fighting. You know, if you want to, you we can get together later. But you know, for right now, hands out of my speedos." Well, there was a fight between Gary Goodridge and the Pedro in Brazil, a famous fight. It, it was like straight up Valley Tudo, no gloves, no rules. And Gary Goodridge reached into his fucking pants and grabbed his balls and crushed them. He was, and Gary Goodridge was. I a, guess that is the cockfighting yeah. part we were talking. About. It was. I'm pretty sure it was Gary Goodridge. That doesn't that. sound like his style, but you know better. Back in the day, yeah. Here, let me. Well, pull he it was up. an arm wrestling champ, so maybe mm-hmm. he figured that was playing to his strength. He'll yank your Franklin. This was. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Gary Goodridge. Yeah, Gary Goodridge versus the Pedro. This was way back in the day, from 1997, and. Uh, he, uh, yeah, oh, vicious great 97 attacks. isn't back in the day. Yes, it is. It's still back Come in the on, day. Not to me. Not to you. Well, you were I'm in the retired, ba- I think, You were in the game point. for four <laughs> years by then. Yeah, dude reached into his pants and fucking crushed his balls. You know what uh, Forrest Griffin said to me at the 20th anniversary? He goes, he goes, you know, I love the early UFCs. He goes, I would have entered earlier, but I didn't want to wear those Speedos. I wanted to wear man pants. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something Forrest would say. When you guys uh, first created the UFC in 1993, how long did it take from the initial idea to the first pay-per-view? Whoa. You know what? Nobody's ever asked me that, Joe. You know, uh, Art Davey called me to pitch me War of the Worlds in April of 93, and we were on in November. Really? So, and, (laughs) you know, and you need three-month lead time for pay-per-view. So, you know, it was like, it was a go. Wow. So you guys realize right away what a great idea this is going to be. Oh, it was, I realized that on an arts call, you know. How can you not, same with you. You saw it, you loved it. You know, I heard about it. I I really did see it as a live, you know, a real life Mortal Kombat. That is really what I saw when I imagined what it would look like, you know. And I thought, who would not watch that? I'm watching it. It's my show. I probably would pay 
myself to watch it. I mean, <laughs> just how can you not watch that? I got aboard, uh, like I said, in 94, I found the video of uh, UFC 2. And I don't think UFC 1 was even available on video, right? Wasn't there some well, sort two, of a dispute? No, no, it wasn't a dispute, but um, Don Gold, you know, who sure, we all know, know and love and is still at the UFC, he bought two and at the same time bought one. Um, and back in those days, you tried to release the videos to be fresh. So he didn't want to release one before two. He wanted two to be the first one, come out very close to the event, all the hoopla, and then later on added one. Also, as you know, one had arguably the worst commentator team in the history of sports. <laughs> Bill Goldberg and Jim Brown. <laughs> G- Jim I liked. Jim Brown. Jim Brown was cool then. I still think he's cool. But what's Superfoot, man? Super Bill moron. Wallace. You know. Uh, How dare you? How dare you? you know. He's a goddamn hero. He's a karate hero. Bill Superfoot Wallace. Is that he's a karate hero? I thought he was he's a karate a, hero. Is that what he did? Oh, uh, he was a badass kickboxer. Did he's you not know? Kickboxer. Of course I knew. How I was dare standing you? backstage and I'm trying to explain to him the name of the show. Right. Which is not the ultimate fighting challenge. Like, it's, you know, maybe it's just a subtle difference, you know, but, but to me, it meant a lot. Right. Championship versus challenge. I'm trying to explain it to him. And he is practicing his kicks over my head. It's not, I'm, I'm not such a tall guy, but he was a high kicker, right? So he's doing these kicks over my head as I'm going, Bill, try to remember the name of the show. So he's it's just like, showing off or something? What is he doing? I think he was being that, silly? He being silly, yeah, and just showing he was too cool for school. Yeah, I got it. And I said to him, I go, are we going to see any kicks like that? He goes, ah, no, you do that in a real fight, they'll rip your balls off. <laughs> I'm like, dude, isn't that what you teach? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a jerk off. He's not a really? hero. He's a jerk off. You know what he did? Joe, there's only a couple, well, there's actually a, more than a couple of people I'm, you know, maybe still annoyed at. Back then, before email, right, when you wanted to communicate something, you had to write it down, put it in an envelope, use a government-issued like form of sticker thing you put on an envelope and you sent it through a government process and it was called the mail, right? Okay, so there's no email. So Bill Superfoot shows up, gets the name wrong, burps into the thing, pays no attention, does a horrible job, takes the money. And then like three days later in Black Belt Magazine, an editorial comes out how he says he's totally against it. So he must have written that. Before he did like it. Like six weeks before, you know? So he just did it for the check? I, I he did it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't that big a check. It was probably twenty five hundred bucks. I mean, if that was life changing for him, he's in bad shape. But I think he didn't like it. Didn't it? I, like a lot of the guys that I think of as paper tigers, mm-hmm. right? I think it was a threat. Well, Bill, I, you can't call Bill Superfoot Wallace a paper tiger. Bill Superfoot Wallace was a great kickboxer. He really was. He I saw him fight live. He was a badass kickboxer. I saw him fight live deep into his forties. He came out of an era of kickboxing when there really were, when it really was a great thing to watch, right? And he was a great kickboxer. There's yeah, he's no from doubt. the Chuck Norris yeah, era. Yeah, absolutely. And there was a bunch of guys. What's his name? Um, uh, Rick Rufus. Mm-hmm. Rick the Jet Rufus. Yeah, tried to get him. Uh, uh, Benny the Jet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Benny Jet Orquidez. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was after all these guys. Mm-hmm. And it was just a little bit too late in the day for them, right? For Benny. Benny was, yeah, um, they were retired. And... You know, and you're right. I shouldn't go off like that. As a kickboxer, he was something. He really was. You just didn't enjoy working with him. I didn't enjoy working with him. I thought it was bullshit to show up ready to condemn something or Mm -hmm. already have condemned it and not pay enough attention to get the name right on something that was as history-making as our first event. But anyway, maybe it's better they were horrible because it just goes (laughs) down in the record books as the worst commentating team of all time. Well, it, it goes down as the beginning and everything. I mean, I sucked when I first started doing it too. It just, you know, it, no one no one had any uh, background in it. No one knew what to do. Yeah. But you know, you know, I didn't know about your fighting background when I asked your manager to do it. What I liked was your comedy style. I liked your persona. And when I talked to Jeff, he goes, you know, he was a kickboxer or something. You know, I forget what he said. It was like, it wasn't very specific. I was like, really? He was a fight? That's how I found out about it. But I always thought you were, you had a tough guy persona that seemed very right for the show. And we needed someone, God knows, that could talk when all hell was breaking loose because hell broke loose pretty regularly in those days. Yeah, and you had a couple guys that were doing the post-fight interviews that just weren't so good at it. They just weren't so good at media. Like Tony Blauer, who's a really good martial artist, knows well, a lot about it, it, self-defense. And... We had to choose between people that sort of knew what was going on 
and real announcers. Right. Right? I mean, that was the choice because we couldn't find anyone. Do you know Brian Kilmeade, you know, started out doing this too? Who's Brian Kilmeade? He's on a show called Fox and Friends. Uh. Uh, you know, it's like... He started uh, out doing this? He did... Oh, I know exactly who that guy one is. One through five, I think. And Brian, if you're listening or anyone knows Brian, I'm sorry if I got the, the number wrong, but... You know, and Bruce Beck. You Bruce know, Beck course, was Bruce excellent. Beck, Bruce Jeff Beck, Blotnick, you know. This. Bruce, Bruce Beck to this day, I, I owe uh, Bruce a debt of gratitude. He gave me some really good pointers when I first started doing the post-fight interviews. He gave me some real good pointers on like, you know, like what to say or what to say if you're stuck and, you know, like how to well, he's do a, it. He's a pro. And he's he a really changed, good guy, too. It. So did Blotnick, you know. Yeah, he's a great Jeff guy, too. In there. Great guy. That was good. That he was, was a, good. yeah, Olympic gold medalist. I mean, awesome dude, too. Really, really. He was a great guy. It's uh, so sad when he passed. I really miss that guy. He was a uh, really fun guy to do uh, commentary with, too. Just a real genuine, nice person. Great you know, guy he, to be around. he had this... Uh, like before the show or backstage, or if there was any problem, he was unflappable. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of gave off a calm. Sure. It sort of helped. Because, like, not everybody on the team was calm. Right, right, you right. <laughs> he was. Yeah. He was a great wrestler, too. Knew a lot about wrestling. You know, and eventually developed his knowledge of uh, MMA, jiu-jitsu skills, and was really interested in learning, you know. I remember there's some videos of him rolling with Frank Shamrock, like, very, very early in the day. Back, I think, when Frank was the champion, and uh, you well, know, that's about the time of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I left right when Frank won, when he beat Kevin Jackson and armbarred him in Japan. I didn't go to the Japan show. That was when I quit. I was like, eh, it's, it's, when did you quit? About '98, somewhere around then, which is right about when Frank I was won, so won sick the title. Of the UFC at that point, I was. <laughs> yeah, I really was. It was. Miserable. It was weird for me too. Yeah. It was like it's, um, you know, it was. All these little tiny propeller planes to these strange places, Augusta, Georgia, and Dothan, well, Alabama. Augusta wasn't, you know, I kind of liked Augusta. You liked you Augusta. Know? I mean, that's wasn't bad. Know, good barbecue. Yeah, good barbecue <laughs> and somewhat friendly town, you know, as opposed town. to Charlotte, <clears throat> where they invited me never to return. Uh, the chief of police said to me, If you come back, I'm not sure what I will arrest you for, but I guarantee you I will arrest you. Wow. What year the was chief this? Chief of police. What year was this? Well, that would have been on. Five, so 95? Wow, what a dick. The chief of police. Did, I, it's there. not like a guy in What's a car. What's his name? Do you remember his name? Uh, dick something. Hey, Dick, go dick fuck weed, yourself. Dick Weed, I think. Dick Weed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, a, what is this. How am I going to remember the I, I mean, come on. What a crazy abuse of power. But it's all, it all, it's all good now because John McCain said he would have entered MMA. Now it's okay because <laughs> the war here said it's okay. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, you know, McCain, I've said this before. Like, I was sort of hoping Jerry Falwell or somebody would come out against, you know, somebody <laughs> I could take, you know, a war hero and, you know, a powerful senator. But you know who was really a tough opponent to counter was uh, um, the senator from Colorado that had, had the judo champion. He'd been an Olympic uh, judicon. Um, ben, he was Native American. Ben Lighthorse Campbell? Ben Nighthorse Campbell? I don't know who he is. Um, Never heard this and, before. You know, because we were kind of intimating that McCain didn't really know anything about the martial arts. Uh -huh. And then he went and found Ben, who was an Olympic gold medalist in judo, mm -hmm. or a medalist. He might not have been gold. And he said, Yeah, we, we, that's no good. You can't do it. You can't use elbows. What are you thinking? Can't use elbows? Oh, whatever he said. Who knows? Whatever the rule, yeah. Whatever it was he didn't like. One of the early opponents, and that was all for a lot of folks that don't know, this is where it gets weird with John McCain. John McCain's wife, uh, their family was involved with Budweiser, right? And he was, the Budweiser was in bed with boxing, and yeah, boxing was- Yeah, but Budweiser's was... in bed with the UFC now. Now? I mean- But they weren't in 93. Don't... Joe, I don't really think that's the connection. I don't think that's what it was. What do you I think, think it was? I think it's odd. I mean, John McCain- you know, is a Republican, so Republicans tend to stand for state control, right? That, you know, keeping a small federal government. That's a, kind of a Republican policy. Mm -hmm. But I think John McCain really wanted a national boxing commission. And I think that this was a good way to promote that. And I think he just was generally offended by the UFC. And I think it was a great way to get press. And it wasn't like people were coming out and going, keep the UFC, keep the U You know, he mm -hmm. just could beat on the UFC and get as much press as he wanted. And look look at look how different America is now. I mean, back then that was the biggest problem facing the US was the UFC. 
I mean, now look at the problems facing America and the world. And you go, we really lived in kind of a magical time, you know, back Wait a minute. Then. What do you mean the UFC was the only problem the United States had? <laughs> <laughs> Were well, you not reading the news in 1993? Well, what, there was what a lot was the of problem? shit going what, on in the like world. What? Well, there's always things going on overseas. There's always things going on that the United had, States... Had you heard of Osama bin Laden in 1993? Okay. Oh, in, in no. that sense, Afghanistan, no. that was a Russian problem. Yeah, that was the Mujahideen back then. Yeah, they were yeah. fighting the Russians, so they were cool with us. Yeah, the I Clinton think... Clinton years, the economy was good. I mean, he got, you know, he diddled the intern. I mean, that was like the biggest thing. <laughs> or she diddled him. <laughs> or whatever. Something I happened. Know. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, that was the biggest issue. Well, I'm sure that what I was going to say, I mean, what I mean is there was, there was certainly other problems in the world. There's violence and all sorts of things in our not if you were reading the media apparently you know it was was it really that big of a deal well maybe it was you because you were really close to it too you know i'll tell you what for me it was uh you know it was riding the tiger right because you know it was great to be in mad magazine it was great to be the uh, final episode of Friends when Courtney Cox's boyfriend enters the UFC and goes yeah, to it. Yeah, that's right. It was great to be in Virtuosity, you know, the Denzel Washington, Russell Crowe movie. I mean, there's, a, there's big, 95. I mean, it's really big media stuff. But on the other hand, when you're that visible, you know, you're making a lot of people angry. If they, if they don't like you, you're in their face all the time. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of a tough thing. So, yeah, it, I mean, it was fun till it wasn't. Um, and you, I mean, you know the story. We were, we had backed off that marketing and we're, you know, the unified rules, you know, were coming into place and, you know, it was a very different sport. Well, for a lot of folks who don't know what we're talking about, when the UFC first came out, there were no weight classes and there were no rules and you could not, you know, the, the, a, a fighter could tap, they could, but the, no one could throw in the towel and the referee couldn't stop the fight. But that was on one. That changed by two. That was insane, by mm-hmm. the way. Yeah. That was insane. Okay, so what is, this sort of highlights it. So <laughs> that's the first episode, the first UFC. And then from there, slowly but surely, rules start becoming implemented. Strategies change, rounds, um, weight classes. Gloves. gloves. Things got really interesting really fast, and I think a lot of people were unaware of it. If you think about the difference between 93 and 97, yeah. I came in in 97 when Vitor made his debut. Gloves were still not mandatory. They were uh, optional. Some fighters fought without gloves. Uh, but it was, wasn't that the case? Yeah, I was against gloves. After I saw Tank knock out, what's his name, Mantua. Mm-hmm. Um, Tank was smart. He figured out, he goes, gloves are a weapon. I'm bringing them. Yeah, you could hit harder with gloves a on. A lot harder. You can hit harder. You don't worry about breaking your hands. Uh, there's a, And the, all the wraps and everything, they give you a yeah, much better uh, thing to hit with. Bare knuckles, tricky. If you hit someone in the knuckle uh, with bare knuckles in your forehead, you can break your hand very easily. It's really common, especially if you catch them with the last two knuckles, the ones by where your pinky is. Your well, hand that was the most snap. common injury in the early breaking days. Hands. You know, and the Gracies were like, wear gloves, don't wear gloves, wear a hat, I don't care. Yeah. You know, whatever you want. Wear well, a vest, we don't it, care. If someone else is wearing gloves and you're grappling with them, you actually can hold on to the gloves. I mean, if there's uh, no rules about it. And guys use the gloves to finish submissions now, too. They've started doing a lot of that. A lot of guys, um, um, the way Josh Thompson finished off, uh, who was it? Um, uh, Ryan, he- Pat Healy? I think it was Pat Healy. No, not Pat Healy. Yeah, it was. I think it was Josh Thompson and Pat Healy. Anyway, he uh, he grabs the uh, glove as he's finishing the rear naked choke, like he's going for the rear naked, and he switches to palm to palm, and then he grabs the glove and uses the glove to finish it off. And I was Why like, not? I was like, that's slick. Well, it's totally legal. Yeah, it's it's totally legal to grab your own glove, and it's also totally legal to grab your own shorts, which is kind of interesting because one of the best ways to defend against Kimuras is to just grab the inside of your shorts, like by your crotch, and just oh. hang on for dear life. I mean. The Gracie's always used the gi for that mm-hmm. type of effect. You know, yeah. you know, I'm sitting here, I'm I'm watching you do this, right? And I was watching your brain try to find that, you know, find that opponent. And you know, you are you're a renaissance man of tough guy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what you are. You know, because your comedy is like that. You've acted as a tough guy. You do comedy from a tough guy point of view. And you know, I think you've probably is this true? I think you've probably seen more MMA than anyone on the planet up close. Is Maybe Joe Silva's seen more than me. Because Joe but he Silva closes goes his to eyes. I've seen him. He's <laughs> over there. He's got his hands over his eyes. It was Pat Healy who it was. <laughs> Definitely Pat Healy that Josh Thompson fought. Um, yeah, man. Look, I've seen a lot. I've, I've up close. I've been to. 
I don't know how many events, but I've seen well well over a thousand fights, like up close and personal, and some of the best fights in the history of MMA. In history, but Joe Silva goes to all the uh, Fox Sports One events as well now. Like over the last two years, he's outpaced me. It used to be we would all we would <laughs> I'm not see surprised. the same amount of fights, I'm but over the last surprised. two years, I don't really do those Fox Sports One ones as much anymore. I do Fox and the pay per view, and then the Anik Florian team does the uh, the other one. But uh, so Joe Silva might be the only guy on the planet that's seen more fights than me. Ex- unless, you know, really hardcore fans. There's some fucking psychos out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen everything. Yeah. Every local show. I don't know. It's hard. I think Joe fits into that category. Oh, he's a psycho. Way. He's yeah. a psycho Joe fan. Joe Silva is a real MMA fan. That you motherfucker know, loves MMA. Yeah, here it is. This is uh, Josh Thompson finishing off Pat Healy. What a beautiful technique, too. He's got the body triangle, and then he's using... It's hard to tell here. Nope, that's palm to palm. I'm wrong. That's just a regular palm to palm grip. I stand corrected, uh, unless he finishes it in a different way and pulls the gloves. I definitely have seen someone do it before. I don't know why. I thought I thought it was Josh because Josh is a very clever guy. He's uh, the point stands. It's a good move. It, the, point the point stands. That's a fucking badass technique, though. Let me see. No, well, I couldn't tell if he did it there. Is that John? Is Go that, pull is that. Yeah, that's John McCarthy. Belt? No, no, he's wearing a microphone, you <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like as he's finishing this off with the body. That's another thing, too, that's changed over the years, that body triangle, man. Guys, uh, oh, yeah, he is doing it. He is doing it. He was doing it at the end. See, my memory is good. I thought my memory failed me. Josh Thompson's a bad motherfucker. Good jujitsu. You know, so much of the fighting has changed. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's incredible, right? It's it's really incredible. It's It's like... You know, like even when you see old films of the, you know, the NFL back in the leather helmet or football in the leather mm-hmm. helmet days. It, you know, football hasn't, I mean, the UFC changed more oh, in yeah. the 20 years. I mean, it's remarkable. But yet you and Joe Silva are still there. Yeah, that's weird. <clears throat> yeah, it it changed radically. And, and, and I brought both you guys in. You, you know? did. Yeah. You did. Well, I was uh, the post-fight interviewer. I'd never done any commentary ever. Um, I had done commentary for Muay Thai. Um, but I never you're a done... professional talker. Well, yeah, but it's, it's still it's, you have to learn how to do it. It's... Absolutely, and you got a lot better, right? Oh, for sure. I, I was terrible in the beginning. It's um, but you were better in the beginning than the people that we brought in on that first show. Um, yeah, maybe. Well, <laughs> you were I had... a serious upgrade. I had a, the the benefit of uh, first of all of watching them make mistakes. That's a huge benefit. True enough. And then the other benefit was I was a huge fan and always have been. I've been a fan since that tape that I picked up at that Hollywood video store. Uh, and that was two? That was the that first was number one you two, saw? yeah. And then I, I started that was training. was a good show. Fuck yeah, it was. I started training soon after that. Um, and uh, I remember thinking, man, this is, uh, I hope this works out. You know, I hope this takes off. Because th- I remember when I looked at the very box that had the UFC on it, the first time I found out about the UFC, I looked at that box and went, wow, they did it. They did it because this is something that everybody in MMA had talked yeah. about. Or I should say MMA. Everyone in martial arts. M- there are no martial arts anymore. There's styles, but everything is essentially, in my eyes, MMA is martial arts now. It's not I mean, this idea well, of mixed in your martial world, arts. In your world, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think they're still teaching kids Taekwondo. Sure, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's, there's nothing a, there's wrong nothing, with it. There's nothing, no. But martial arts is MMA. You know, it is martial arts. And um, when uh, we we were coming up, like, I was a Taekwondo guy, and, you know, I had friends that, that, that did karate, and I had another friend that did this, and everyone always wanted to know what was the best. And you didn't know. You, you really had no idea. You had no idea until the UFC came along. It was all just speculation, and everyone was convinced that their style of judo was uh, unstoppable, or their Shotokan was the best death touch, and, you know, whatever it was. It was all just shit talking and guesswork. But when I looked at that box, I remember very clearly thinking in my head, wow, they fucking did it. They actually did it. Like, this was the thing that everybody had always talked about. Yeah. Get everybody together, make them duke it out, Kumite style, like a fucking <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. In a cage. But even better, because it was in a cage. Yeah. Big when octagon. I, dude, when I would tell people, when I was working for you guys, I was uh, on news radio, which is an NBC mm-hmm. sitcom. Fortunately, news radio was not doing well and it wasn't popular, so the network didn't come up to me and go, hey, fuckhead, what hey, are you dude. doing cage fighting hey, commentator dude. for? The advertisers <laughs> are very uncomfortable with your side gig. <laughs> they didn't have any problem <laughs> because that show could have been canceled every year. It would almost got canceled. That was a good show, Joe. It was, it a, was, very a, very it was a very good show. It was a very good show. Good characters. But we didn't have the benefit of political backing. 
drinking, so we got moved a lot, and uh, it was never like a guarantee. But I, but when I was doing it, people would talk to me like I was doing porn. They would talk to me like I was off like shooting porn on the weekend. They're like, "What are you doing? You doing cage fighting? Why are you doing that? Why are you why are you interviewing cage fighters?" I was like, "I like watching it." And people would look at you like there's something wrong with you for liking watching. Because I it. like watching it, dude. I'm telling you, man. I got seriously judged by by people in the in the industry back then when it was not popular at I, all. I commiserate. And when I moved to Larchmont, which is a snooty little town in Westchester outside of New York, my wife goes, "Please don't tell anyone what you do." <laughs> <laughs> you know, the UFC had paid for the house. But she Isn't goes, that hilarious? Please don't. Please, if you could not bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's much 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 more acceptable now. I mean, no, uh, absolutely. It's now, on Fox. It's uh, you know, it's rumored to be an Olympic sport in the making. So, well, that would make sense. But you know, if you have curling as an Olympic sport, I think <laughs> don't knock. That's my that's my MMA people. In. Your people, you Canadian. Uh, well, Scottish. Which is oh the Scottish curl as well, right? Well, they invented curling, and 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 the Canadians are Scottish because you know that drink Canada Dry. The Scots thought that was a challenge, so they all went to drink Canada Dry. You know that's oh that's an old whiskey wah, joke. Wah, I'm sorry. Wah. The three Scottish listeners you have are busting a gut right now. Though. I love the Canada Dry material. I was on uh, one of those shows, like Best Damn Sports Show or something like that, way, way, way back in the day, and uh, I was telling them, I said, I think it's going to be an enormous national sport one day and they were laughing they thought it was you know, hilarious there's a, you know look there's a lot of stick and ball guys in the sports business that still are waiting for it to go away like oh and, yeah and they don't like rock and roll or hip-hop either well there was some shithead on um who does amateur football he does college football and he was talking about uh after anderson silva broke his leg that this is the reason why he would never cover the ufc never has never will you know and mma fans i'm sure got what really was the offended. reason because Anderson broke his leg. Because his leg got broken. Exactly. And, and I'm he, like, he's, he he's works a in fucking football. football guy. Yeah. Not I only mean, that, he's, he's college football. They don't even make money. They're uh, yeah. getting head yeah. injuries for free. Well, and the colleges are making billions of dollars. Well, the are no shit. rules guy's not commenting on other sports, Joe. Well, those, I just, I'm not doing that. <laughs> the no rules guy. <laughs> well, those guys, those those fucking higher moral ground sports guys, they're well, ridiculous. Well, you know, yeah, you, but you know, there's a real reason for it, and it, it is. And if you look at the NFL, you know, the, with NFL films that turned the sport into a heroic endeavor. And I think NFL films was really changing in, in the media business and in the sports business because they turned football into this epic story and it became very advertiser friendly. And it, you know, ends up in, you know, the Super Bowl, which is the most advertiser friendly thing on the planet, right? So I think that whole thing was built out and anything that rocks the boat, the way we rocked the boat with boxing when Tyson was moved from pay per view to Fox opposite the ultimate ultimate. Back in the day, there hadn't been a heavyweight boxing match on broadcast in, I think, 16 years. And strangely, Tyson is put up against our cha- uh, tournament of champions. You know, that's not a coincidence. So I think when you're protecting something, you know, it's a siege mentality. And I think a lot of the pure sports guys still feel a little bit threatened by the UFC. Well, you better tell Dana White because Dana White will put shows on. Op- well, he used to always do that. Put uh, <laughs> spike shows Dana on op- opposite yeah. of Affliction or God opposite. Bless Dana. <laughs> you know, he likes to go to war. Yeah, I do, you know, I, I am a I am the number one Dana fan. I gotta say, it's a, he's the greatest. If it but wasn't listen, for him, I wouldn't be working for the UFC this time around. Well, you know, I, none I, of us would be sitting here talking about the UFC if it wasn't for him. Well, I had no intentions of going back and doing commentary. I was totally talked into it by him. I was watching the fights like cage side. That's back when um, Goldberg and uh, who else was doing it with him? Jeff uh, from Hook and Shoot, Jeff Osborne, um, and Blatnick. They were doing it. That was, uh, you know, 2001 yeah, or two. Yeah, 2000, 2001. Yeah, so I was just watching. Look, Dana got it the way, the way I got it, the way you got it, and instantly, mm-hmm. and then was in. And then you're in, and yeah. you you know, and you're a Mormon. You can't, you know, you're going to have four wives or whatever. Wear the special whatever. underwear. Yeah, whatever it is, you are in. Uh, yeah, and the UFC has that effect. Yeah. <laughs>